I'm hot, but God is still good. Amen. I want to welcome you all to William Chapel United Methodist Church for our Sunday morning drive up service. Uh, we just want you to continue to join with us in this mission called the Mission Continuum. The journey commit continue what we have to do with the church. Is even though we're here in the walls, we have to go out and serve. And let's all do our part. All the ministries located in the church, let's fulfill those. Again, you're welcome, and let us pray. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we humbly thank Thee for this opportunity you've given us today to arise and sound minds and able bodies come forth to that church for a brief church service. And we want to just say thank you for all you have done for us this past week's journey, bringing us through the ups and downs, the good and the bad, Lord. When we look back, we know it wasn't nobody but you that brought us this far. And we want to say thank you. Now we ask you to be with us within this service and to bless as we proceed through this day. These and all things we ask in that son, Jesus' name, amen.
Amen, amen, amen. Again, it's a blessing to be back together as we continue to navigate through COVID-19. We're trying to make it ends meet and trying to uh, journey through this path that we've never been on. And so uh, we all are needing one another. We all need prayer. We all need just to uh, encourage one another just to continue to fight the good fight of faith. But God is still in the midst of the blessing business. And even amen. though there's so many things going on all around us, a lot of issues, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, but God is still yet doing great and wonderful things. The songwriter said so many wonderful things about Jesus, so many wonderful things about him. And so we got to continue to look to the hills from which come our help. And we realize all of our help come from the Lord. Amen. If y'all enjoyed that selection, wait till you hear this selection. Let's give this two piece band and two piece choir another hand, another blow. <laughs> And they come. Alright, we're gonna have to do all the help us in your car now. Help us in your car. You all know the song. And when I say it, you sing it. Come on, let's do it. You are God. Let's do it. You are the Christian. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it.
it's just not what it used to be, but we have to make the best out of the present situation, asking God to give us strength, wisdom, and guidance to navigate through these times. Amen. If y'all can, um, now I want to say, let me see y'all wave your hand. Let me see y'all wave your hand out there. Open your one up and wave your hand. All the air ain't going to go out. <laughs> And toward navigating ourselves through these particular circumstances and situations as we try to get everything worked out and fixed up and all like that you know and um but like i say this is a challenge it's a challenge to us all each and every day of our life it is a challenge to work our way through these particular times and so again we thank you for sharing with us today here at william chapel united methodist church our fourth sunday worship service and it's indeed a blessing just to be together our text is going to be taken from what we've been working with is from, I don't know whether to leave the glasses on or take them on. <laughs> that ain't funny. You don't know who laughing out there. <laughs> and that was funny. Let me hear you blow your horn. Y'all ought to be ashamed of y'all self. <laughs> All right. St. John chapter 4, verse 24 says, God is a spirit and it is necessary to worship God in spirit and truth. I'll read it again. God is spirit. And it is necessary to worship God in spirit and truth. And we know God's word is truth. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for the privilege and opportunity. You have allowed us to assemble in this session, this way, realizing, God, that you're still in control. You have all power in your hand. Strengthen us where we're weak and build us up where we're down. Anoint these words, God, these lips of clay that I will share, inspiration and information that will be a blessing to all of us. Oh, God, hear us. Hear us when we pray. Hear us, God, when we pray. And every heart said, Amen. I need, we'll do a little old school for you. Y'all hear me say, the old, uh, I need thee in every hour. I, Lord, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to church say amen again don't forget to check out our web page at www.paulincharge.com check it out got any suggestions to help us with it please feel to give your personal insight we love to hear from you all of those who are listening from far and now from all over the world we invite you to check into our web page and get more information about us and what happening around the paul and charge here in Jasper County, Heidelberg, Paul, and Mississippi. Don't forget on Wednesday at 6 o'clock, our Sunday school Bible class starts at 6 o'clock on Zoom. If you need that information, just get in contact with us, and we'll get that to you so you can be a part of the Bible study, which is the Sunday school lesson for the upcoming Sunday. Uh, we're having such a great time doing our Sunday school lesson. Some of you are still struggling to get in, but... Give us a call. We have somebody who will walk you through the process to get you in and get you on to our Sunday school gathering. A great time of worship and fellowship. Brother David Lee, he takes, try to take us over, but I have to calm him down. But uh, we appreciate his comments, though. Amen. Amen. Keep up the good work. All right. And again, every Sunday, we going back in the parking lot. We're in the parking lot and uh, sharing God's word. So we thank you for taking out the time to make this adjustment. And you know, for some of us who are old school people, we have lived a life of adjustments. How many of y'all remember back in the day when they used to have the stick shift, uh, the three speed on the collar? How many of y'all remember that? Let me hear you blow your horn. One time. <laughs> y'all get crazy with them horns. 
But I remember that when you was driving that stick, it had a tendency to break. And we didn't have no money to go no part place and replace it. And wasn't no mechanic, but how many of y'all know a screwdriver can work wonders? <laughs> you just take the screwdriver, put it in that socket, and you went on with business as usual, amen? So just like it was then, so it is now. You have to find, we have to find ways to make the adjustment to navigate through these times. So we ask God for wisdom, guidance, and direction in order we can pull that off. Also, we do have PayPal. i would be the first one to tell you, I don't know how you get on there. This is just uh, uh, if you want to make a donation, I think you go to your PayPal, and then you look up Perfecting Word at AOL.com, and you'll find me there. But also, our class leaders are doing a great job. We appreciate them continuing to check with our members, just not for their monetary gifts, but also to check and see how you're doing. Make sure that we're checking on one another so we can encourage and help one another because we all need help. Now, to our text today, if you really want to get into a controversy, all you got to do is ask somebody about what is worship. That'll get it going right there. It depends on who you ask and what denomination or what their upbringing was to determine what they would say what a worship is. And so you're going to have a lot of different aspects and a lot of different opinions about what is worship. But we really want to know. We had to go to the book and find out what does the scripture say is about worship, spirit and in truth. Now, I found this definition for worship, and I like it pretty good. It says the attitude. And y'all know we got attitudes of true worship is that deep, heart born inner spring of love, adoration to God that bursts forth in intense gratitude and joy, habitually because of an overwhelm and humility that a holy God will pick a useless sinner like you and me and call us his children. Now, as we begin this process, we begin to study this matter about what true worship is. We started with talking about, first of all, that true worship is internal. It's got to be in your heart. Because you can be in church, and it's not in your heart. You're just going through the motion. It starts within the heart. Mary helps us to understand that when she said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. This inner and in, internal thing that happens in your heart. Then we said, uh, it's intense. Uh, which means to magnify. The word magna means to make large. It's intense. And then it is to worship. It's habitual. It's continuous. If you only worship on Sunday morning between 11 and 1, have long you're in service, then that's not really true worship. Worship is a lifestyle. Each and every day, the songwriter said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And worship is who humbling it makes you humble because we know the object of our worship is god because he's been good to us and done so many wonderful things now scripture first of all calls us to put worship first causes us and calls us to put worship as a priority not something that you just placed over on the side like a spare tire and say i use it when i need it but it is a priority for the child of God, I must. I have to bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Now, when you study the Bible, in the book of Numbers, uh, you had some, there, around about the 20th chapter, the Leviticus, uh, the Levites, uh, you had to have at least 25 of them, but the priests had to be about 30. And worship was a priority, and worship leadership demanded the highest level of maturity. When people are in worship, or when you're a part of worship, there need to be a sense of maturity. Even angels are worshiping creatures. Now, sometimes people have a wrong perspective of worship. Now, the angels, they had four wings in one particular text. Two wings covered their face and two wings covered their feet. Now, our life is a call to worship. It's a priority. And it's a call. And then worship, we told you on last week, influence every area of our life. There should be nothing superficial about your worship. You shouldn't have to wait on nobody to worship. Of course, where two or three are gathered together in his name, 
But you don't have to have nobody to worship. You can worship all by yourself. Now, what are some ways we don't want to worship? We don't want worship to be unacceptable. Have y'all ever cooked something that was unacceptable? Let me hear you blow your horn now. Some of y'all told the truth. Some of y'all did. <laughs> but you have fixed things. And when you got through with it, it was totally unacceptable. Just like you don't want unacceptable dishes, God don't want unacceptable worship. When we worship in false God, it's unacceptable worship. And when we, our worship is man-centered and not God-centered. And then we don't want to have that wrong form of worship. We don't want to have a self-style way of doing it. And we don't want to have a worship that we're trying to please the culture. Because if you're trying to please the culture in your worship, the culture changes. Things changes in our culture. We move from R&B to hip hop. I don't know where y'all going after that, but it's changes. And so our worship need to be authentic and remain faithful to what the scripture says worship is all about. Uh, worship, we can worship with the wrong attitude. Y'all seen people who they sing the song, but the way they look, you wish they would have sat down. Don't blow your horn. <laughs> You've seen people do things that you rather not just really wish they wouldn't have did it because of their wrong attitude. In Michael chapter 1, it says, A son honor his father, a servant his master. Then if I am a father, says God, where is my honor? And we honor God, we need to do it with the right attitude. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. And so realize, my brothers and sisters, worship should be filled with the word of God, with the expression of God's word. Every single second, every moment, God's word ought to be amplified in our worship. And worship also should touch every aspect of our life. And how we treat our fellow believers has a lot to do with our worship. If your worship didn't impact you enough to treat people right, then there's something wrong with your worship. There's a text, Romans, I think, 14 says this, don't put an obstacle or a stumbling block in a brother's way. And oftentimes, the things that we do hinder people from worship. Sometimes some people can't worship. I know everybody at a different level of maturity, but a baby Christian can't worship when they see how we do and how we act and how we treat one another. That's putting a stumbling block in someone's way. We need not to do that. That is unacceptable to God. Now, Paul said when, he said, when I preach the gospel and people respond and believe, it is a means of winning the loss in the form of a portion of his worship. For walking in the light is pleasing unto God. Walking in the light is acceptable to the Lord. Walking in the light, which means... We ought to show the goodness of God and live out the righteousness of God. How we deal with one another and non-believers, Philippians 1, 9 says, having been filled with the fruits of righteousness which come through Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. We need to have pers a personal relationship with God first, a personal, uh, intimate relationship with Him. And in closing this morning, as we talk about worship and the forms of worship and unacceptable worship, realize in our time of worship, 1 Timothy 2, 3 says the idea of being acceptable to God or the word pleasing to God. And verse 1 said, I urge us all to pray and petition and thanksgiving on the behalf of all men, kings and leaders. We have to pray for our government. If you're not praying for our government, you, you definitely need to get back down quick, fast, and a hurry. And praying that God will move in the midst, in the minds of the leadership of our country. If we ever needed the Lord before, we sure need him now. First Timothy 5, 3 tells us, take care of the widows. This is a part of acceptable worship. It's checking on the sick and shut in. Now, you always say, that's the preacher job. I agree with you. That's a part of my responsibility. But, you know, when I go, I can be seen as coming because I get paid. And that's not the reason. I go because the scripture admonished me to go. But we all ought to be checking on one another 
and checking to see if everybody's all right because it's a part of our worship. It's a part of that worship experience to say, how you doing? Are you doing all right? It's amazing how we got all this technology and still people don't get information. That truly amazes me. You can text, you can talk, you can email, you can Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, and all these things. And then some folks say, I didn't know. Of course, you can go old school TV and radio and get information. But the point of the matter is today is that let our worship be acceptable to God. Let us examine ourselves daily. God, is my worship pleasing unto thee? Is my life pleasing unto thee? Lord, don't let me do anything that will hinder someone from worshiping you by me having a bad attitude or saying the wrong things or doing the wrong things or going to the wrong spot because worship is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for this privilege and opportunity you have allowed us to assemble here. In this particular manner, in this way, Lord, it's different. We acknowledge that. It's different, Lord, not like it used to be. But we realize, Lord, nothing stays the same. Things change. So help us, Lord, to know and to realize we have to move into the new norm with thanksgiving, with praise and adoration unto your name. We give you glory again. And we take this moment to worship. And a part of our worship, Lord, is confession. We confess the things we've done that's been contrary to your word. We ask you to wash us again in the blood of Jesus, cleanse us and make us whole. We've said things, we've thought things, we've gone places we shouldn't have gone. Have mercy right now, Lord. Forgive us and wash us clean, whiter than snow. Oh God, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You say, let it be, and it was, and it is. You created the heavens and the earth, and we give you thanks. As we continue to pause out of this busy, busy, chaotic society, Lord, you have helped us to slow down. Yeah, you have allowed it to, to slow us down tremendously. Help us to get the message, Lord, that we need to take this time to spend it with you and giving you thanks and praise. Bless our homes, our families, our jobs. Bless our community like only you can, Lord. Be with us, Lord. Strengthen us where we're weak and build us up where we're down. Heal those that are going through affliction. Bless the scientists and those who are trying to come up with a vaccine, Lord. Give them the wisdom that only can come from you. Touch in a special way. We refuse to give up because we realize we come too far. We turn around now. You've been just too good to us to throw in a towel. And so we say, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We worship thee in spirit, within, intense, humbly, oh God, continuously, because you're worthy of it. Thank you right now for the children. Bless the school administrators, Lord. They need your wisdom. Give calmness to your people, Lord. Help us to realize nobody have ever been in this before, Lord. And, then, and because of that, Lord, we're going to make errors. We're going to make mistakes. We've never seen this before. Nobody's an expert. If they were, they'll come to the front. But we know we're keeping our eyes on you. For we look to the hills from which come at our help. It all comes from you. Remember the elderly, the sick and shut in. Touch them right now. The bereaved families, have mercy right now. And we just take a moment at this time from your car, join in with me just briefly as we sing this hymn, our musician is playing, and say hallelujah. Just help us sing it in your own way. Hallelujah. 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 You 
Brother Mag, lift your hands. Take your hands out the windows and lift your hand. Let the whole world know just how good God's been to you and how he's worthy that you be praised. We'll do it one more time. Help me say hallelujah. Do it from the depths of your heart. Do it with the right attitude. Do it because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. At this time, we're preparing to take up our offering. All right, they'll be coming to your cars as we worship God in our time of giving. I almost got too happy, y'all. I like forgot about the offering. Most preachers don't never forget that, do they? If most preachers don't forget that, let me hear you blow your horn. All right, they're coming around, and while they're coming around, let's do a little bit of Lee Williams this morning. Uh, uh, I can't.